Hello and welcome to Geology Concepts. Today we are going to discuss about a very important topic for your upcoming Combined Geoscientist uh, mains, which will be held on 22nd of June this year, right? So today we will be discussing about how to use different types of diagrams, tables, and flowcharts in your answers so that you can enrich the quality of your answers in the mains as well as save time while you write lengthy answers in your examination, right? So today we will be uh, covering about what are the different types of diagrams, right? What are the different types of diagrams and where and how to use them, right? So this is something that you will be uh, able to grasp at the end of this discussion, right? So before we discuss uh, what are the different types of diagrams and how to use them, we must understand the importance of the use of these diagrams and flowcharts, right? So the first and foremost thing that you need to keep in mind is by using the flowcharts and diagrams, you can save a lot of time in your examination because it helps to explain difficult concepts. First thing, if there is a, if there is a lengthy uh, uh, concept which you will be uh, rather writing in a paragraph format, so you, you can use the flowcharts or diagrams instead of those long explanation to save time, to save space as well as to make your answer look clean and neat, right? And at the same time, it enhances your answer quality. So this will be a unique. This will be your USP in the answer, right? So you, the most of the people will be writing the same answer because this is geology. So geology, the concepts are mostly same. So everybody is going to uh, write the same kind of answer. So this uh, using the diagrams and flowchart can actually differentiate your answer from the rest of the uh, uh, competition, right? It also breaks the monotony for the break monotony of the answer for the examiner. So you need to understand that if there is only text in your answer sheet, right? So it, it, it becomes very monotonous for the examiner who is checking your answer copy. So in order to break that monotony, diagrams and flowcharts can be used so, so that the uh, answer quality also increases and also it um, helps to um, uh, uh, project a very uh, seasoned picture to the examiner, right? And also it provides an information summary because as I said, difficult or lengthy concepts can be summarized into keywords which can be used as flowcharts, tables or diagrams in your answer, right? So this is the importance of why you should use diagrams and flowchart in your answer. So the next thing that you need to keep in mind is while drawing the diagrams in your answers, the first thing that you should keep in mind is that it should be very suitably sized. Suitably sized. That means you know that the, there is space con constraint in terms of 10 markers you have only two pages and for 15 markers you have three pages right so within those two and three pages you have to write your answers that doesn't uh, using the diagrams doesn't mean that you uh, have you can eliminate the uh, explanation part right so you can you have to explain the concept but at the same time you can use the diagrams to uh, first thing is to uh, substantiate whatever you are writing in your explanation and also to uh, make the um, answer look good and clear right so for that uh, to happen, you have to keep in mind that while you write your explanation, you must use the diagrams in a suitably sized manner so that you don't miss on, miss on your explanation right? Uh, and uh, the intro, body and conclusion format that we have discussed in our previous videos, right? And also, you need to practice the diagrams beforehand. So in the last video when, uh, uh, where uh, we have talked about the note making part, in that note making uh, uh, part of itself, you have to practice certain diagrams beforehand because if you think ki aap seedha ja ke exam mein likh loge, uh, um, and then you can draw the diagrams in there itself it will never going to happen the diagram that you have uh, practiced and used beforehand can only be replicated in the exam so practice these diagrams beforehand and also you have to label your diagrams very properly by giving proper caption at the base caption at the base and explain the annotations Whatever annotations that you are using in your diagram, you have to explain them, right? Well, explain means you, ha you have to just write them down in your diagrams itself. And also always draw the diagram in a box because it um, helps to uh, differentiate what is the explanation when uh, for what uh, explanation, which diagram you have drawn in your um, answer, right? So for that, you have to draw the diagrams in a box, right? So you, you have draw drawn the diagram in a box, then you can mention the annotation to the right of the diagram. So this is how you uh, draw the diagrams in your examination, right? So now let's talk about different types of diagrams that you can use. The first thing is, I, I would say you can use tables. So tables are also 
a part of the value addition that you can do in your answer right when can you use them so you can use them in comparison based questions for example there is a question on starty from out deposit and starta bound out deposit so while explaining the starty from and starta bound starta bound out deposit rather than explaining them in paragraphs you can make a table where you can compare different aspects of starty from and uh, starta bound out deposit in a concise and clear manner by doing that what will happen two things will happen first thing that there are different dimensions that you can cover in your answer and those dimensions can be very visible to the examiner right and the second thing that will happen is your explanation will be short and crisp and it all will always save time for you in the actual examination well you can cover the whole concept in a very uh, uh, precise time time and you can also represent them in a short and crisp manner so when there is a comparison based question you can always use diagrams uh, in form of tables you can always use these tables and while uh, drawing a table you should always write the aspects first then explain the concepts side by side right explain the phenomena side by side so this is how you can use the tables right moving on you can use the flow charts now when do you use a flow chart so you use a flow chart when you want to show a process or a chronology of event right or what does that uh, what does that mean so for example take this uh, question this is also a cgc previous year question that it asks the evolution of vertebrate over geological time scale now you can explain the uh, the evolution of vertebrate in the geological time scale in whatever manner that you want but if you draw draw a flow chart explaining uh, how, how the uh, vertebrates have evolved throughout the uh, geological time just uh, by the side of your explanation the examiner gets to know that that you have explained well uh, how the evolution have taken place in the uh, in your ex explanation right so even if he doesn't go through the whole explanation he can get a idea that you have explained them very well in your explanation and give you marks through the flow charts itself right so this is how you can use the flow charts in your answer so flow charts are very important you can all use them into so processes or chronology of events so this is a example of chronology of event you can also uh, when there is a uh, question on ore genesis or ore forming processes you can also use flow charts to show how different types of ores are formed uh, through different methods right so this is how you use the flow charts next is the pie charts and these are the one of the uh, these are one of the most underused diagrams in you in our geologic answers right so most of people most of the people ignore this kind of flow uh, pie charts when can you use them you can use them to show various proportions uh, of minerals or rocks that are your that you are explaining in your uh, uh, answer like igneous um, um, metamorphic or the um, uh, geochemical compositions in those uh, uh, in those explanation you can use this pie charts right so for example you can see that here i have explained about explain the elemental composition of chondrites right so the con chondrite meteorite the elemental composition i have given in a pie chart and also i have uh, uh, mentioned what are the different quad uh, quadrants that are represented in the pie charts itself so don't forget to mention the quadrants that you are using in the pie chart it's, it's a very uh, useful and a very uh, effective way to represent different proportion of a particular uh, mineral or rock right so you can always use pie charts while uh, uh, mentioning the geochemical com composition or the composition of the rocks and minerals right next type of diagram is what i called a hob and spoke model right so what what are these hob and spoke model and wh wh when you can use them so you can use them first thing is when there are multiple factors that you have to write and you have to write this multiple factor in a limited space so you have limited space and you have to write a multiple factor about something so in that uh, uh, in that uh, case you can use this hob and spoke model this can be used in uh, uh, for example the environmental problems and solutions so if uh, there is a question on landslide you can uh, uh, explain the uh, problems and uh, you can also explain the solution in this hob and spoke model you can also uh, um, uh, mention about various policy like the national mineral policy that is there in your syllabus and its various features through this hub and spoke diagram so how how it is done for example take the example of chondrites and its features so there is there was a question what are uh, different types of chondrites and what are the features so i have explained the feature part here so what are the feature of chondrites so this is the hub right this is hub and this these are the spokes so that's why it is called the hub and spoke model right so chondrites they provide insight to elemental composition of our earth and uh, the universe and then key components are silicate minerals glassy structure are called chondrites and so on right 
so you can mention the particular phenomena which is the hop and then mention its different features through this books so this is how you can very easily play with the keywords and uh, draw a flowchart or a um, hub and spoke flowchart to explain the concept concisely as well as save space and time right or you can also like i said challenges of landslides these are the different challenges that you can show in the challenges of landslide part right and then the other one is the mitigation measures right so mitigation measures can also be um, shown in a hub and spoke model so this is how you can go about the hub and spoke model right and lastly uh, the maps right maps are the very important part of our geology answer writing right so india map is a must in your most of the time you will use them in paper 3 part for economic mineral economic mil, um, economic geology and uh, indian mineral distribution right in that part you have to mention this uh, uh, the map of india and also you can use them in stratigraphy portion right so please practice this beforehand practice the uh, maps beforehand world map you can uh, use it in your earthquake and volcanic distribution part and see th these these diagrams are very basic in their nature you don't have to uh, draw some uh, very good diagrams but just a representative diagram you have to practice before that and you can use them in your uh, answer because this is how you can value add to your answer right and when, while you uh, mention these diagrams please uh, the maps please ensure that you label them properly with caption and coding right so you you you, you can uh, label them to one side like this i have uh, shown the coal distribution in india you can uh, uh, draw the map and then label them properly and as well as you can code them properly in the diagram itself you, you should always draw a map within a box right so use a box and within that box you draw the diagram right so this is how you go about the maps so maps are must right so uh, practice the india map before and, and also the world map world map can be used in earthquake and volcanic volcano distribution right so this is to go about uh, this is how you go about the maps and then lastly there is a, a cyclical concept diagram or a cause and effect diagram right so when there is a cyclical concept or there is a question on causes and effects you can use this kind of cyclical diagrams so for example the earth earthquake the cause of earthquake is release of energy which is generated by the seismic waves and it produces surface ruptures and these surface ruptures in ka effect kya hota hai earthquake so this is a cyclical diagram this start with the cause and ends with the effect and both are linked the cause and effect are linked so in this kind of concepts you can use this cyclical concept diagram or a cause and effect diagram where you can show the causes and the, how these causes lead to the effect of earthquake or whatever the, the, the phenomenon is asked in the question you can um, uh, show them in your um, answer itself right and then finally you can also use them in the um, uh, vol uh, volcano uh, the how the volcanism occurs you can also do that right uh, the magma beneath the surface it triggers eruption events which results in lava flow and ash clouds it shapes the volcanic landscapes and it also influences the magma beneath the surface so this is a cyclical diagram how the cause how it causes and how it affects right so the cause and effect are interrelated and they can be mentioned and used um, mentioned by using this kind of cyclical diagrams right so to to uh, draw these diagrams in the actual exam you have to you have to practice them beforehand right so you cannot draw this kind of cyclical diagrams immediately in the exam if you have not practiced them before and right so you you while reading or um, uh, uh, trying to make your notes you should always focus on how you can shape the diagrams how use your inno innovative skills right but how you can innovate in your answer that is the primary goal of answer writing how you can innovate so while you uh, write your answers always think in terms of how to mention them using your keywords and how to play with the keywords to uh, to draw different hub and spoke model diagram tables flow charts and cyclical concept diagrams or the cause and effect diagrams pie charts are also very important you can use them in your diagram as well so this is all and if you want to practice them beforehand there is a subjective test series that geology concept has made uh, for the upcoming mains which is in line with the upcoming uh, the in line with the trend that are asked in the 
um, combined geoscientist uh, mains examination, right? You can al always join them and practice these diagrams and the flowcharts before and before the exam comes, right? So I hope uh, you have found something useful from this video. I, I and I hope that you will be able to value add to your ad uh, answers and will be able to differentiate your answer from the rest of your competition. And with that note, I'll leave you here. I'll see you in the next one.